for more rocket fire today from Gaza into Israel. More airstrikes and artillery from Israel into Gaza. Just today alone, officials in Gaza say 50 people were killed in the same period of time. Israel reports hitting what they call hundreds of terror targets. More than 1,600 people have now died in Gaza in this recent military offensive. 61 Israeli soldiers and three Israeli civilians have been also killed in the fighting. This is what Israel has been focusing on, the tunnels that they say allow those Hamas militants to enter Israel and attack Israeli troops, then go back into Gaza. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said a short time ago that destroying the tunnels remains a top priority. Our forces are accomplishing the um, work on the uh, offensive tunnels. Up until now, tens of tunnels were destroyed. We uh, managed to hurt severely the strategic system that Hamas actually built for many years. All right, I want to go straight to our John Voss, who is in Gaza. John, uh, you are on the ground there. Tell us a bit about your situation at this hour. Well, Poppy, the military operations in Gaza continue. Even though some of those troops have now withdrawn, especially in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, uh, Israeli tank fire and artillery continues to hit the southern part of Rafah. That is where Israeli soldiers are searching for one of their own, believed captured, uh, but missing rather, believed captured. And the death toll on Saturday for Palestinian civilians hit 112 in one day alone. Here in Gaza City, we can still hear the drones above. There has been artillery fire throughout this evening. And also, there was a drone strike not far from our office. This is what it sounded like. It was pretty close. It's the closest it's come so far. As we say, those operations continue. There is still the sound of explosions and uh, fire here to the east of Gaza City. Matthew Chance now standing by live for us in Jerusalem. He has more reaction to Benjamin Netanyahu's speech. And Matthew, uh, the Prime Minister there, really defying international calls for him to end this operation because of the high civilian casualties. He's saying this operation will be done when it is done. That's right, uh, and, and that speech by the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu following a very emotional uh, press conference by the family of that missing Israeli soldier, Haydar Goldin, uh, believed to have been captured by Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip within the past few seconds, really, John, just as you were talking to me. We've had confirmation from the Israeli military, the IDF, uh, that um, Lieutenant uh, Haydar uh, has been... Uh, confirmed as killed in action. Uh, there's been meetings with the, the family members uh, of Lieutenant Haydar, uh, Lieutenant Goldin rather, uh, near Tel Aviv at their family home. Uh, they've been meeting with the defense minister, with the chief rabbi of the, uh, of the Israeli military and with other senior military officials in Israel, uh, talking them through uh, the process which has led uh, the military to conclude this. Um, from the statement that I've just been reading, there doesn't appear to have been uh, any indication of what evidence they have of this. It doesn't say for, whether or not, for instance, um, there is a body that the, the Israelis have, but clearly uh, they're saying at this point that they believe uh, that the, uh, this soldier, uh, this 23-year-old Haydar Goldin, a second lieutenant in an elite force uh, that was uh, exploring and trying to destroy uh, tunnels from various locations in the southern Gaza Strip, has now been confirmed dead, so that's uh, terrible news, of course, uh, for the family of Lieutenant Haidar. And it brings to 64 now, confirmed the number of Israeli soldiers that have been killed in this conflict since it began on July the 8th, which is, of course, an enormous toll uh, from an Israeli point of view. It pales in significance in numerical terms uh, compared to the 1,700 or so Palestinians uh, that have been killed. But it, it means that in Israeli terms, Attitudes are very hardened. That's why Israeli uh, Prime Minister's uh, address to the nation earlier tonight uh, said that the military operation will continue until quiet has been restored in the Gaza Strip and security has been guaranteed uh, for the people of Israel, John. Matthew, I realize that this is still very early. There's information coming in. This is a developing story right now. But 
what we've been told is that there has been this intensive search down south. There are Israeli tanks in the Philadelphia corridor between Egypt and Rafa, area controlled by Israel under international law, sealing off that border into Egypt. We're also told that the IDF had sealed off all the roads to the north, essentially so if uh, Lieutenant Golden was captured, the militants who were holding him couldn't get out of that region. They were shelling it. There had been airstrikes. What is the latest now, if you know, on that operation in southern Rafa, presumably if they believe that he is now dead, that operation will be wrapping up and those soldiers presumably again will be leaving. Well, well that's right. And uh, uh, of course Hamas that had been accused of capturing Hadar Goldin, this uh, is Israeli soldier, had from the outside, outset denied that they had an Israeli soldier in their, uh, in their custody, that they'd seized this, this, uh, this lieutenant. Uh, saying that they'd lost contact uh, with their fighters in the southern Gaza Strip, where that military operation has been taking place, uh, and where, if they said he had been captured by their fighters, they believe he, he could have been killed. They'd lost contact uh, with those fighters. There was a ferocious airstrike or series of airstrikes uh, following the, the capture of, of that Israeli soldier. Um, you know, Hamas militants saying that they believe that their fighters, along with any Israeli soldier may have been killed uh, in those airstrikes that followed the incident. And so, yes, there's been a, a huge upsurge, and you'll be able to tell us better than anyone, uh, in the, the military operations taking place in that southern Gaza Strip. Dozens of people uh, killed in the immediate aftermath of that incident. But obviously, uh, this confirmation coming now to us from the Israeli Defense Forces, the Israeli military, uh, that as far as they're concerned, um, Hadar Goldin, uh, has been confirmed dead, he's killed in action, the family have now been notified. Uh, just a few hours really after the family uh, had gone out on television uh, here in Israel, they'd spoken to CNN, uh, CNN spoke to the brother of, uh, of Lieutenant Goldin, uh, appealing to Hamas militants for the safe return uh, of their family member, of his brother. Uh, obviously that, that's not going to be a possibility now. Again, we don't know about the status of uh, Lieutenant Holt Goldin's uh, body at this stage. Uh, hopefully we'll get some clarity uh, in the coming hours, the coming days about, about the, uh, uh, the situation regarding that, John. And, and Matthew, from a political point of view, without sounding gruesome here, because we are dealing with someone who has died, as many people have died throughout this conflict, we're talking about, a, we should say, we're talking about a Palestinian death toll of around 1,700. But the reason why we are focusing on this soldier, because he was missing, he was captured, and now that he is confirmed dead, at least according to the IDF, that in a way makes it a lot easier, at least politically, for the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I, I think there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, it's, 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 it's one of the big strengths, but it's also one of the big weaknesses of the Israeli military, that they, they do deals, and they have done deals in the past. Um, with militants regarding the return of captured soldiers. Back in 2006, of course, Gilad Shalit, uh, an Israeli soldier that was captured in the same area, actually, of the Gaza Strip uh, by militants there. He was held captive for five years. No one saw him for that whole period. The Red Cross didn't get access uh, to him in capti captivity. He was exchanged five years later for 1,000 Palestinian prisoners, the release of 1,000 thousand, a Palestinian prisoners. And so that was a very difficult national trauma uh, for Israelis and uh, yeah, at the same time it's, it's, a, it's a kind of commitment that the Israeli military have. If there is a soldier that's captured, they do everything they can, they say, to get that soldier back. And so uh, while I won't say that you know, the, 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 the Prime Minister of Israel will be, will be relieved at this, I think you're right, it, it does make the job uh, that he's got ahead of him a little bit easier from a political point of view, press ahead with the offensive if he wants to do that and he says that he does. Uh, in Gaza without the consideration that there's an Israeli life at stake in the hands of Hamas militants and without the consideration that at some point in the future this soldier may be used as a bargaining chip. That's not something that will now uh, be able to happen, obviously.